The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Queen Tamiya's on Orient Native Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. We got two great football coaches to talk to this week here on the podcast to talk about their recent success. Um, we're going to start with um, our first guest here. We got North Farmington coach John Herstein. Welcome back, coach, to the podcast. Thanks, Sammy. Thanks for having us on. Um, when you really look at, you know, you started off the year 0 and 3. I mean, like, and you've played a, your schedule was tough. You played Groves, you played um, Caledonia, and you played Seaholm. But you've turned it around with two wins, um, knocking off Troy Athens and also Troy. Um, talk about how your season's been thus far. Yeah, so um, obviously, like you said, it started off with some pretty tough competition in Groves and and uh, Caledonia and Seahome. And, you know, throughout those games, I thought we showed some improvement uh, uh, as a team. I thought we guys, um, you know, started kind of figuring out who can play what position and, and also, uh, you know, who, who's got the, the ability to get the job done. So um, o- overall, those first three games, they might have been losses, but, you know, they were good opportunities for us to grow and to see what see what some other good football teams look like and what it takes to compete with them and, and hopefully beat them. Um, when you look at, of course, those first three games, <laughs> those first three games, your defense was absolutely just shredded. I mean, you look at the points allowed, um, and then, and then, and then when you got into the, um, the games against the Troy schools, your defense really clamped down. So how has the defense been doing? I mean, the first three weeks has been a total, it was a disaster, but the last two weeks has been much better. Well, you know, as a staff, our, our defensive coordinator put in a, uh, some tax in the circus. We kind of went back to the fundamentals. Um, just trying to play cleaner football, uh, uh, making tackles. You know, we always talk to our kids about doing their one of 11, do their little part, uh, trust their teammates and, you know, play for one another. And I think, I think that they've really bought into that, the, the toughness part of the tackling circuits and some of those things that we've been doing, uh, I think are, are paying dividends along with the, uh, the technique and kind of the return to the fundamentals. Um, Obviously, talk about your offense. I mean, Ryan Shelby, um, you know, how's he been doing? Um, also, and I want to talk a little bit about that game against Troy um, when you guys went in there and beat and won 24-6 against a very good Troy team. Um, talk about how Ryan's been doing, and then we'll get into Troy. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're a little bit getting to start the year, so our offense struggled a little bit. We, we were down a couple of running backs at times, and uh, – then we were, then we were, then we were on a, uh, uh, so we were down a couple of tailbacks at, uh, for a couple of those games. And then, um, and then we just couldn't really get much click and we got our tailbacks back. And I think Ryan's kind of settled in and starting to develop a little bit more of a, of a run game. Uh, kid named Deke Blanche has done a really great job the last two weeks running the football. And, um, and I think that's kind of taken some of the, the pressure off of Ryan. Uh, a few weeks ago, Ryan, I thought, had a really good game, had a couple of TV passes, uh, uh, had a couple of turnovers, but to his credit, you know, the following week uh, eliminated that. We're, we're fortunate enough to, to have no turnovers against Troy, and that's kind of something that we've been focusing on. And when you played Troy last week, you know how good that defense is over there at Troy, and – to put 24 points on them. I mean, the last two years you played Troy, you've outscored them. Um, you've outscored them 33 to um, six in the last two years, including last year's nine nothing game where you guys won at Ron Holland. Um, so, yeah. what is your um, what is your what were your initial thoughts when you went into Troy and um and won that game? It was a big win for you guys. Yeah, I mean, I you know just thought that we. We had a good game plan in mind uh, defensively. I was excited about that. Uh, I thought the kids executed it pretty well in practice. And then offensively, I felt like uh, I felt like we were able to to do some things to move the ball down the field. Uh, the kids the kids uh, did a nice job executing there. I thought we blocked pretty well up front. 
and uh, you know we're able to get out of there with a nice win and and uh, you know probably left some points on the table, but you know that's just how it goes. They uh, they're, they're well coached and got some some pretty good players and uh, and uh, you know we're, we're pretty stout in there at time times. And when you look at your schedule coming up, I mean, you got Oak Park still on the schedule. I know you got Oxford later in the year. Um, you've already played Seaholm. Um, what was your initial thoughts? I know, I, I don't know if you've watched the film yet in Oak Park, um, but what's your initial early thought process of the Knights when you saw them on film? Uh, I, I think they are very athletic. They got a couple guys in the backfield, the quarterback number one, uh, tailback six and three, who are extremely quick, uh, very talented players up front. I, I thought the two offensive tackles did a good job. Uh, I know their left tackle, I think, is uh, uh, is only a sophomore, and he's got he's got some pretty good uh, technique and pretty good ability. And same thing for the right tackle, number 55. I think he might be a senior, but uh, they, do, they do a good job up there. Uh, I, defensively, you know, we played – we played Oak Park many years, played Coach Carter's teams many years. They're always well coached defensively. They always cover well, hit, run downhill, all those things. So we'll have our hands full. You know, it'll be it'll be a good game. Uh, but I'm excited about it. It's our homecoming opportunity for us to play one of our four home games uh, this year and and uh, see what we're made of. And when you look at, of course, the, um, the schedule, obviously, um, your schedule, I know – you guys not playing Farmington, I know kind of hurt the kids morale. I mean, like we talked about this the last time on the pod, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you look at you guys, um, you know, I know you guys, I know some of your kids always keep an eye on how Farmington does, but, um, but when you look at, um, when you look at going forward, um, you know, obviously, you know, you look at your record right now, you're two and three. Um, I've looked at the, um, you know, at the, you know, I've looked at some, po I mean, some people have been saying like you guys are projected to be in the postseason. Um, I know you don't look into that, but it's, it's getting, your, getting yourselves better. But, um, but when you look at the schedule, I mean, like it really, it's an interesting schedule. I mean, you guys still got to play Boopy Hills on there. Um, you guys got Oxford coming up. So the rest of the schedule, what is your initial thought process, you know, looking at the schedule for you guys? Well, you kind of said it, you know, you just got to take it one game at a time, you know, and, and, from where we were week one to where we are now, like I said, that return to fundamentals and we return to like the inner focus on yourself. You know, don't worry about the opponent. The biggest opponent is yourself. Uh, you know, we talked to our team about being an infinite player, a guy that can go out and, you know, just compete against himself at times and just, am I better than I was the day before? And, uh, you know, don't, don't be confined by the constraints of, uh, of, of the game or, or who you're going again. But for as far as those other teams, not to completely uh, kind of go off about uh, not, not saying much about the schedule. Those other teams are good. You know, we'll have Oak Park this week. That's obviously our number one focus. Next week is Pontiac and they've they're improved. They've won, won a couple games this year. And, uh, you know, I think their coaches are trying to get that thing headed in the right direction. So, you know, I'm sure they'll be fired up and ready to play us. Um, and then after that, Oxford, and you know, I know what what Coach Lyons done up there, and uh, seems like they've they've really got that thing kind of going pretty good. Especially when you look at their score against uh, Oak Park, they they kind of beat them handily. Um, so I'm sure they're they'll be a tough opponent. And then finishing up with Bloomfield Hills, who uh, lost a tight one to to Farmington a couple weeks back. Uh, I, I I did see that. Um, so I I think you know kind of give us a, a good gauge of where we stand among the rest of the OA also. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, though, you just got to only, only focus on the here. Uh, what are we doing right now? What are we doing this week? What is our main goal for, uh, for, for the, this coming Friday? And when you look at, of course, those first three games, and I know it was really difficult, you know what I mean? Like, um, obviously playing against Groves. I mean, like you were in that game until the, um, to a block field goal and then having to go to Caledonia. Um, it was, you know, it was going to be very tough. I mean, like playing Caledonia, playing their first home game on their new field. And then of course playing against Savonia. Um, and then of course playing against Seahome um, week three. I mean, like what is your, you know, when you look at playing those three teams, 
you think it's really helped you guys, you know, forward, you know, going forward, playing those those three those three games? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you want to play tough competition, and, and I think all three of those teams have tough competition. And and to be honest, in all in all three of those games, you competed really well at times. It was just a, a consistency thing. When you look at Caledonia, I think it was like 17 uh going into half, you know? Uh, and, and they actually had an opportunity to kind of go down there and score at the end of the first half, and then we didn't. Uh, so that, you know, even with even with that game as lopsided as what it is, as lopsided as it was, I thought the kids played really hard and they showed, they showed some toughness and some ability at times. And like you said, with Groves, the block field goal definitely hurt. I thought the kids again responded back well from a defensive standpoint to start the second half. You know, they give up the block field goals, time's expiring. They, you know, return it for a touchdown. We went from being possibly six to eight to whatever, 14 to, to, uh, mm-hmm. to three. And, um, and then our defense actually got to stop. And mm-hmm. I thought, you know, those are some of those things that you that you kind of celebrate. And then obviously you, you kind of you got to point out the letdowns or the missed opportunities. For example, like when you do get a stop to start the second half or in a trail like that, how the offense couldn't get something going. You know, you want to you want to respond, you get the big stop, and I respond with some points. Um, and those are some of the things that we're still working on. And and uh, you know, part of part of the growing up process as a team and as a program. And when you look at how is the JV program doing over there for you guys? I mean, obviously, you know, and then how is the um any any stand up players we the league the league needs to know about? Obviously, the last few weeks with North Farmington. Obviously, we talked about Ryan. We talked about um Duke. I mean, like obviously, um you know, any other standouts we need to know about? No, I mean, they're, they're playing JV football, and, and it's actually quite a few freshmen up there playing on the JV team. Uh, we only have one lower level right now. Um, you know, I, I think they're just they're improving. They're getting an opportunity to play. They're figuring out how to play. I was impressed with some of the kids' effort on uh, on Thursday night against Troy. They ended up losing the game, but uh, at times you saw some of the kids really make some pr- pretty, uh, pretty good plays as far as running sideline to sideline. and and uh and doing their part to you know uh stop them from scoring defensively in particularly uh you know and then you know talking about the GAB program you know cleaning up mistakes you know too many turnovers and things like that that kind of that's hurt them but yeah they're playing GAB football they're figuring it out i think they're coming together as a team and as a uh and as a unit and building some bonds that should pay dividends down the road um before i let you go coach um one final question um when you look at the state of the blue. I mean, how is the how? How are you going to look? How's the blue? You think in your in your opinion going to play out before I let you go? Well, obviously, uh, um, Seahomes in, in in the front in the driver's seat. You know, being uh, undefeated in the league play. So, you know, it's theirs to theirs to lose. But they got some they got some tough opponents coming down the road. I, I think they still got to play uh, Oak Park. They and got Groves. I, I think pretty highly of them. They got Groves, uh, which would be, uh, you know, the rivalry week game for them. Uh, that'll be a good challenge, you know. And to be honest, like, I think having coached in that game before, you know, you can throw records out. Won't matter what Groves' record or or Seahomes' record is at that point. It's a lot like when in North plays Farmington. Uh, it, it it's going to be a competition. Like guys are going to go uh, all out against. All, all out in those games, regardless of where they're at in their season and what they're playing for or whatever, they're, they're playing for a city championship. So, um, yeah, I think I think Seahome's kind of kind of in the driver's seat, but uh, you know, Oak Park, Oak Park, uh, they'll have an opportunity uh, to go against them, but first they have to go through us. So, um, you know, just wait and see how wait and see how it plays out. Okay, now one final thought, um, Coach. Um, what is your expectations this year? Before I let you go. Well, I think, like I said before, to get better each week, to improve, to play four quarters. I think uh, that's our expectation. We, we missed out on being league champs, you know. Now the next step is just to win, win as many games as you can, give yourself a chance for the playoffs, and make make progress week in and week out. Hey, uh, North Farms and Coach John Herstein, um, thank you for joining us this week on the podcast, um, making time for your bu- with your busy schedule. Um, thank you for joining us this week, Coach. No problem, Sammy. Thanks for having me on.
Yep. Um, Ken, that was North Farmington coach John Herstein here um, talking about the Raiders. Um, obviously, now we look at um, you look at North Farmington, their schedule. I think they got a chance to make the postseason. Um, so we'll see what happens um, with the Raiders. I, I think they got a good chance. I know um, Snooze to you um, did his playoff maps, and he has North Farmington in right now. Um, it'll be a very interesting game with Oak Park coming up. We're going to preview that game. Of course, Farms and TV 10 will have that game. I know the good, good folks down there very, very well. Um, they're going to have that game over at Ron Holland Field. It's North Farms' homecoming. So that'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. And I'm going to take a little break here. We're going to talk to um, Avenue Coach Bob Meyer here on, the, here on the podcast this week. Go. All right. Welcome back to All Right Now here. I'm Sammy Tamina here. We got the coach of the Avondale Yellow Jackets, Coach Bob Meyer. Coach, um, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Appreciate you having us. Appreciate uh, giving the boys their props for all their hard work. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Avondale this year, I mean, like, obviously we talked about the change of philosophy going from an air raid offense to a wing T type offense. We talked about that at media day. Talk about how you guys have really changed that offense. And then that defense has been looking really, really good lately. Well, I, I think probably the biggest uh, change from date might be the defensive side of the ball. Uh, my defensive coordinator, Jason Summerfield, and staff have done an incredible job making sure that we don't give up big plays and we make our opponents work it down the field. You know, we, we can keep them and force them to, hey, 10 plays in order to score. The, the odds are in our favor that they will not successfully be able to do that. Uh, in terms of the offense, you know, I, I have a reputation for, for like being ground Bob and, and running the football, but th there's two parts of that. There's a mentality of, I get the football and I can eat the clock. No matter what you do, if we score, you're under pressure to have success on your next offensive drive. And if there's enough stress, you'll start to do things that you are not very good at. Um, we can throw the football. Our first couple of weeks, we did run because we wanted to establish that that's who we are. and We wanted our kids to get better at it early. And now that they've started to, I don't want to use the word master, but uh, improve mightily at being able to run the football and the concepts that we're trying to teach and embrace it. Now we're starting to throw the football more. Every week we've opened it up just a little bit more and a little bit more. I do want to get your thought process. I know you had some big wins on under your belt. I was, obviously, the week two win against Brandon, that was huge, knocking off, um, going into Ortonville, knocking off Brandon. And then, of course, I'm going to try to pick your mind a little bit here. That final minute and eight against Oak Park, I remember that very well because I watched that game. Um, Avondale Sports, they do a very good job on their YouTube page. I'm covering the game. Um, you know, you guys in that Oak Park game, dominated that game until the um until the final 108 and then like when Oak Park took the lead I wanted to know what your thought process was that final minute and eight you know what I mean of that game so your first question on the Brandon Brandon was one of the games that we circled because we knew that they were going to be well coached uh they had the wide receiver who's a walk-on at Michigan uh it was our first away game and understand I'm still learning the kids and, and their mentality and their psyche on, on every uh, possible topic. So we circled that one as a big one. Uh, and then of course it was uh, the first week of school and we had a couple injuries and it was their dedication for, to their new stadium or the new field turf. So that one had, a, it was a tall order. It was a tall order early on in the season. Uh, but our kids learned a lot from week one, which is always a good sign for a team that how much improvement do you show from week one to week two? Um, we battled back on that one. We could have could have collapsed easily, could have folded the cards. Um, but our kids showed some resiliency and embraced what we were trying to do. And part of that was that was the first time where we really started to own the clock in key situations. So that was a that was a big win for us. Um, in terms of the Oak Park game, I would not say it was our best game, uh, most exciting for sure. But, you know, offensively, we did not feel we had our best game. 
But when our back was against the wall and they took the lead, you know, we, we had to respond. So that was a seven minute drive on offense for the score to take the lead originally. We knew we couldn't kick the ball to uh, their quarterback, right? number one. So, you know, we had a pooch kick, and in one play, he housed it on us for 60 yards. I All night, we had, we had their offense wrapped up and, and earning, doing a really good job. But number one is the type of kid that can make you miss in a phone booth. They're the ones that scare you. And from the first two games, he was not their quarterback. I believe he was their wide receiver. I don't know if it was due to injury or what, but the last two games he's been the quarterback and or maybe the last three now, he, uh, he's got special skills in the running department. So he you know, regained the lead in one play and we got the ball back with 50 seconds left. And, you know, we, we practiced it. But so far, as I said, I think in three of our five games, we've, we've been down at one point in the second half and the kids almost go into a zone. All of the mental mistakes that have been made throughout the game seem to get pushed to the, to the side and they started making plays and playing the way that they're capable of. Uh, great shout outs got to go to uh, Cooper Vaufre for the catch that he made, big catch and run. And then, of course, Tyler Herzog literally put us on his back. Uh, had a big run, picked up first down, they carried some people, broke some tackles, and then uh, hit Noah Bates for what should have been the game-winning touchdown. But we'll take the quarterback sneak with almost no time left on the clock for the win. Talk about Tyler. I mean, obviously, when you look at, you know, your first year coming in, you've had an experienced quarterback, you, break, you have an experienced quarterback. How has Tyler been? You know, obviously coming coming with the new transition, new offense. I mean, like, how's he been doing? Well, let me let me give you three stories really quick. Okay. Uh, first off, the reason I applied for the Avondale job was because of your podcast and what you wrote about the team moving forward at your end of the season summary. It allowed me to find film on these guys and do my homework on them. And, and what you wrote was, was pretty accurate. So that piqued my interest. And I had a staff that I also had to convince to come with me. Um, and we don't live in Avondale or Auburn Hill. So it's a little bit of a drive. So there was some convincing to do. So I want to give you, you know, kudos, kudos for that. Thank uh, you really much. The second one was uh, in the interview process with the athletic director, Mr. O'Shaughnessy, who's been nothing but aces. He's one of the reasons why we are where we're at. And other programs like the soccer program and the bas boys basketball, girls basketball are all on the rise right now too. But uh, I had to install or, or teach something to the boys in the interview process. So me being wing tea guy, Buck Sweep is our bread and butter. And I had to teach bread and butter Buck Sweep to kids who were used to throwing the football all over the place. And I could tell by their affect, they were in shock by what I was doing and explaining and the attention to detail that is needed to run the play without ever talking about throwing the football. And I explained to them that you guys can beat teams that are equal or lesser with what you have done in the past. If you want to win playoff games, multiple playoff games, you have to be able to run the football when the weather turns bad in November and thankfully some upperclassmen and even one lower classman stepped up and said they didn't care about the statistics. They didn't care about, you know, chucking the ball all over the place and greatest show on turf. They wanted to win and they wanted to beat people who would be meaningful. So in terms of Tyler, to come into a senior quarterback who would make a great football coach right now. He literally is a student of the game. He processes everything. He diagnoses everything. He asks questions. It's been a lot for him because we, what we say is being the quarterback or being a leader on a team, heavy lies the crown. A lot of the kids are still learning, but it's on him to know not only everything he has to do, what the defense is doing, but he's also coaching up the kids on the team in the huddle when we're not out there. And we've had some growing pains, but Tyler has been the one 
to keep the ship pointed in the right direction and moving. So kudos to our captain. Talk about the gold. I mean, obviously, you know, you're leading that division right now. Um, it looks like, you know, you've knocked off some good teams in that division. Um, talk about, you know, some of the teams that you guys have seen in the division. Uh, so far, we've been able to uh, play Berkeley, uh, who is struggling, um, and Ferndale, who was a, a very, very good football program and team this year. And we got them at our place. Um, we've got Royal Oak this week, which they are they're well coached. So, you know, we got our hands full and then we still have uh, obviously Pontiac left, who's take the Lord off the schneid and, and coach. I was impressed with at the OEA media day saying all the right things about getting your kids to work hard, which is exactly what we're doing now, too. Um, you know, I told the boys that when I came in, they one of their goals was to win the gold. And I told them, my goal is to get you guys to do your job every single play and get better. And if you could do those things, not only will we win the gold, not only will we be in the playoffs, but we'll have home playoff games, which is what our program is focused on right now. How important is it for your program to be at at at, um, at Dick by Field for for um for the postseason. How important is it for the community, the program, and yourself to be at home for the postseason? It's your goal. It is a huge advantage to get the teams on the buses to come out and have to sit and and be somewhere foreign and it's a little bit of a constriction of their fan support and you know that kind of thing. But to me, it's also a reward. When I was when I was at Waldeck Central, I explained to the players there that, you know, I was raised at Waldeck Western during a time where they were winning multiple state championships, where you had to wade through the crowd in order to get to the field. I'm not, I'm not talking in the seats. The seats were all full. I'm talking five people deep around the entire fence line. I said, once you achieve that moment, you know you have arrived and that you are a real football program. And that's what we're striving to become here at Avondale. And when you look at a course, you know, when you look at where you guys are at right now, you're in a really good spot right now to achieve those goals, to get in the postseason, to host home playoff games. I mean, like, and that, and that is a, um, that's a bit, that's big time. But when you look at the division, you're in division three, you look at teams like Birmingham Brother Rice, you look at Wall Lake Western, um, teams that could, you know what I mean? It'll be really interesting if you guys see them in the, in the postseason. So I'm friends with the Western uh, head football coach. Corey is a, is a great guy. And coach Corey, we Throach. were talking, we, yes, we were talking this spring and I told him, I said, I have a feeling we'll be playing come the fall. And he smiled and said, I hope so, because that would be two groups of really good kids and would be really good high school football, but not anything that I can control. So I really don't worry about who we can play or where we're going to play. But if I can manipulate it to gain any kind of advantage, that's what I'm going to do. Um, talk about your um, your um, sub-varsity, your, your junior varsity team. I mean, like, how has that program been going for you guys? You know, especially in the youth levels, because, you know, you have Avenue Middle School down um, next to you guys. Um, how, is, how has the youth program been going for you guys? Well, we have currently in the whole program right now, the high school level, we have 81 kids in the program, which is more than from what I've been told they've had since like almost 1999. Wow. Um, we have our JV is uh, they're four and one right now, and they're doing really well with their numbers, about just under 40 kids in the program. We also had a freshman game last week where we were able to come up with about 15 kids to create a team and have a game. So we actually last week, we ran three levels um, very, very briefly, but that was, that's our goal is next year to have a freshman football team. And in the gold, that would definitely set us apart at the middle school level. We have 25 kids in the eighth grade team. Mm -hmm. uh, coach down there is doing a great job and we have 18 kids in the seventh grade team. So we're, we're building it. And that's what I, I promised when they hired me was that I would build a program uh, for everyone to be very proud of and get the community behind. And when you look at a course, the um, division you're in, a course have, have you thought about, you know what I mean? I think when you look at you guys, you knocked off a very, a white, a, a blue team in Oak park. Um, it, I mean, last week, um, you know, I, do you see yourself 
you guys going up against like um teams like a a Troy or a Troy Athens, um taking those teams higher up, you know what I mean? Higher higher yeah. up, you know. You guys I know there have been some discussions about moving up. I, I I believe we belong in the gold a little bit based on our enrollment, but we have so many open dates. Like like what's gonna happen is as as we have success like we are experiencing this season, is that our open dates they're not going to want to play us. Right. I learned that. At, I learned that at Clarenceville. My my first two years at Clarenceville. You know, I took over Clarenceville. They had forfeited uh, like four of the nine games. So when I took over the next season, everyone wanted to play us. Everyone's looking for that free win. Well, when you start to win, then all of a sudden people aren't returning your phone call anymore, and that's what's going to happen to us next season. I would love to fill it with the teams from the division above us because that's what the OEA should be about, I believe is about. And those are good teams and good programs. So, yes, I would love to go against the Troy Athens and the Troys. I know both their coaches, and as I said, they run great programs, and and I would like to see that kind of a rivalry develop because Troy is so close with us that we start to do those kinds of things. But I know scheduling and, and two-year contracts and those kinds of things. So we'll see. Can't control it. I'll let the people that make the big money make those decisions. And when, of course, you look at the rest of the season for you guys, your um, not your other non-conference game, you played um Warren Cousineau earlier in the year, and now you get to play Warren Fitzgerald to close out the year. Um, what were you, what's your early thought process of playing Cousineau and then playing Warren Fitzgerald? Uh, you know, I've not played any, anybody from that part of town in a long time, so it was great to see their brand of football. Um, it also kind of helps us when we do make the playoffs kind of measure up instead of playing everybody straight around here. We have a little bit of an idea of, of what the styles and the level of uh, competitiveness are for these teams. So we're looking forward to finishing the season strong. And as I said, hopefully achieving our goal of playoff games at home. Um, and, and we just continue to get better. You know, the whole season we've been focusing on the attention to detail uh, eye discipline, hand, foot discipline by all of our positional players. And we've got four more weeks to continue doing these things in order to get better. Because right now we're we're not at deep playoff football preparedness right now. But we've got four weeks to get ready. Time's burning, and that's the pressure that we put on our kids. Any other players besides the, um, the players we talked about um, that the OA needs to know about, especially those, you know, when you look at Avondale, that the entire league and maybe the entire – they need to know about heading into the postseason? Well, you know, Miles Moore is our starting tailback and linebacker. I believe he's uh, double digit touchdowns right now, averaging well over uh, 130 yards a game rushing. So he's been, he's been great, but we've also focused on distributing the ball. Our tailback by design takes a lot of the carries, but both of our slots, and we've got a bunch of them. Like we have, we have five different kids that have played the slot at some point in time. And, and Justin Greer Seitz and Matt Lloyd and Cooper Volfre and Noah Bates. But our own D line are deep too. You know, we got Joey Wall and Charlie Killian with Cam Washington and Trey Valentin and uh, just doing doing great yeoman's work right now and making everybody earn it. Aaron Upshaw, our linebackers with Earl Arrington have been just phenomenal with Bryce Thomas and, and, and the DBs. Uh, we're, we're very pleased with all of our kids. And, and the first game, we literally said, you only get to play if you're here every day, you're working hard, you've earned our trust. And if that's, if that's 11 kids, then it's 11. And early on, we were in the low teens. And every week, it's bumped up. And right now, we're, we're in about 30 range out of 40. So we're still looking for the last 10 kids to – kind of come around. Um, you know, Marion Backstresser has been a great corner for us. Um, and and uh, Matt Lloyd at linebacker and running back is, has given us a lot of quality minutes and quality plays. So <laughs> we've even got two good kickers. Hunter Petrus and Tim Paul have been amazing. We put them both out there on kickoff and they both recovered onside kicks. So, so we're getting there. You know, we've got some injuries to, to hopefully have kids heal up from. Um, but we're we're getting there. Um, a preview year game. I know you talked about this game earlier with Royal Oak. I mean, like obviously, when you look at the Ravens this year, um, 
what is your looking at your your uh, mindset of the Ravens? I mean, like, what is your initial thought process when you see focusing on um, you know, focus on on this week? We tell our kids, you know, well, if you ask them who who are we playing, who's next, they will tell you, don't care, and that's not a disrespect to anyone. Their focus is on playing their best football game against whomever we go against. All of them need to improve. All of them know the the technique, their assignment, their alignments, that they're making mistakes on that they have to get better. So Royal Oak is, is a team coming in, or we're going down there, but we're focused on getting ourselves better. And if we can do that, we can stand up against anybody. And when you look at a course, the, um, before I let you go, Coach, um, you know, I mean, like, what is your, I mean, like, what is your message to OA Nation to say about Avenue football? Well, I'm sorry. So we have what is your, again. what is like your, um, what is your message to say to the entire league about Avondale football? Avondale football is the real deal and we're here to stay. Mm-hmm. And obviously when you look at my um, rankings this week, Avondale, I have them ranked fourth in the um, rankings um, this week in the inside and run the OA top 10. Um, coach, coach Bob Meyer, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Um, you know, I'm, I mean, I mean, I wish you guys the best of luck this upcoming season and um, the, the next final four, four games. Appreciate you again. Any and all uh, props that you can give to the kids in the program is always greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Sammy. Thank you very much. Of course, that was Avondale coach Bob Meyer here. Um, thank you for um, joining us this week. Um, let's look at the games this week. Obviously, <laughs> when you look at Avondale this year, I think truly to me, this is the best team in the gold division. Um, when you look at the matchups, um, coming up, I mean, you look at, of course, we're going to, when you recap last week's games, um, of course, when you look at the gold division, um, Avondale clearly stands out as the best team in that division. Um, I really think, you know, that when it gets Oak Park, you know, the, dr the drama, you know what I mean? Everything with Tyler Herzog winning that game, um, give credit where credit's due. I mean, they haven't won that game. I mean, they won that game, um, went down the field, of course, with Tyler Herzog, obviously. Um, but I give Avondale a ton of credit against a very good Oak Park team that was red hot after two tough losses to UD Jesuit and Oxford. And, you know, I'll tell you what, they're for real. They really are. Um, and then you look at Berkeley and Pontiac. Pontiac won that one 34-28. Um, Honey got to hang on. I mean, they had to hang on and win that game. It was not an easy game for them. Um, credit where credit's due, though. I mean, Coach Wendell Jefferson, they've got three wins this year. That is double the win total they've had in the past few years. That says a lot right there. Um, but again, good win for Pontiac there. Um, Ferndale, of course, knocking off Royal Oak, 33-14. Um, difference in that game was... Um, Difference in that game, obviously, Colin Huck um, being comfortable. If he can be comfortable, you know, who knows what could be for the Eagles going forward. So that's something to really watch for going forward there with um, when you look at um, Ferndale. For Royal Oak, obviously, the defense is still their calling card. Um, offensively, we been getting better. But <laughs> I think, on, honestly, at the end of the day here, it just comes down to is can Royal Oak balance both sides of football. I mean, that's really where I think they're going to have to do. Um, Berkeley's case, you know, when you look at Berkeley, you know, 28 points at the start, but they've got to start winning games. I mean, you know, so we'll see what happens there um, with um, with Berkeley. I mean, you got an interesting game coming up with Ferndale. We're going to preview that one in a couple minutes. Um, let's go from the um, gold to the blue. Um is mentioned we had Coach John Herstein earlier here on the pod. Um, I think when you look at that game, and I think this is going to be interesting to see how um to see how um you know Troy responds after a tough loss because when you look at Troy and the Colts are a team that really you know I mean I you know people look at Troy and say is the schedule finally getting to them. And it looks like it has been because when you look at Troy, the schedule, you know, when you're playing against teams that are, <laughs> that you can win against, 
you know, get easy W's against, that doesn't always help you. And I think Troy's finding out that scenario after losses to um to Oak Park and this and to North Farmington. <laughs> now they get to play um now they get to play Seaholm this week, and that's a difficult matchup. Seaholm, I I agree with Coach Hurston, best team in, in the um division, best team in the um in the in, I mean I think Seaholm with the way they're playing, they are red hot right now. 156 points in the last three weeks. That says a lot. Colton Keeney's been being Colton Keeney. Um, the Kinney brothers have been dominant. Um, Robbins has been dominant. I mean, they've got a lot of dominance um, when you really look at what um, what um, Seaholm has going forward there. Um, Oak Park, the great mystery, still unknown with them. I mean, been better the last three weeks. That says a lot right there. Um, even the Lost Avondale, um, I like where Coach Carter's program is going right now with the way that team's been. Um, and then you have Troy Athens. I mean, I don't know how to describe Troy Athens because, honestly, you know, they have really struggled the last, last three weeks. 105 points allowed in three weeks. That's not winning football right there. Um, you know, I, I don't know what how Tom Cook, Coach Tom Cook's going to respond to um, to this. I mean, like, bottom line is, you know, Troy Athens struggling. That could be a very interesting um, scenario for them going forward. And that's something to really keep an eye on there with them. Um, but like I said, in the Blue Division, Seaholm's the best team. I think North Farmington is still second. Oak Park is third. Um, Troy is fourth. Troy Athens fifth right now. That's my take on the Blue. Um, in the White, um, you look at, of course, Southfield Arson Tech, what they did to um, Farmington, 46 to nothing. I mean, my goodness. I mean, Isaiah Marshall dominant, Tashi Braceful dominant. Um, a chance to rest their starters in the second half. Now, albeit Farmington did not have Camp Petaway. Uh, Petaway did not play in that game. I don't know if he could have made a difference in that game. Um, but for Southfield Arson Tech, this is the lightest part of the schedule coming up um, before they head to the Swamp in a couple weeks. Um, and then with Farmington, I think Farmington's in some trouble. I mean, like you really look at with Farmington, um, they got Lake Orion coming up. They got Utica coming up. Um, you know, they still got to play Harper Woods. I mean, it's not going to be an easy road for, for Farmington, for Coach Jason Albright, um, going forward with that team. I mean, like, it'll be very interesting how that one goes <laughs> with them. Um, Groves. 42-7 over Rochester. Um, Groves got right back in the thick of it. Good win for them. Um, Rochester, they've got some things to figure out. I mean, they've really got some things to figure out when you look at Rochester. I mean, they they do. Um, so that's something to really keep an eye on with them. Um, Bloom, Harper Woods and Bloomberg Hills played on a Saturday afternoon. 49 nothing Harper Woods. Um, Harper Woods is still legit, man. They're legit. I mean, Nate Champion, real deal at quarterback. I'll tell you what. I've been so impressed with this young man. You know, the way he's been at quarterback. I mean, it allows to move Ramity House. It allows, you know, Jacob Oden to have some great moments. Harper Woods' his defense is back. They're starting to score bunches. Um, big one with Groves looming this week over at Harper Woods. Um, something to really look at when you look at them going forward there. Um, when I look at the division, um, my take on the division, um, Southfield's clearly the best team. I think Harper Woods is a little bit better than Groves when you look at the talent level, but Groves and Harper Woods are like right neck and neck with each other. Then it's Farmington, then it's Rochester, then Bloomfield Hills. Um, let's go to the red. Um, I mean, like, when you look at Clarkson 39-13 over Oxford, um, really surprised here that Oxford really struggled against Clarkston. Um, <laughs> Brady Collins had a great game for Clarkston. Um, there's no doubt now Oxford's struggling. There is no doubt that the Wildcats are struggling. Um, they got some issues to figure out. I mean, when you look at Oxford, um, they've got some big issues they've got to figure out and quick. Um, Clarkston, you know, <laughs> Brady Collins has gotten better. 
The Bowman Twins have really started to improve. Adam Denver's been playing really well in the secondary. Des Stevens is Desmond Stevens. Um, you know, Brady Cozen obviously has had some moments. Um, but, you know, I'm curious to see how Clarkson does these next two weeks because these next three weeks because it's brutal. Actually, these next four weeks, they're brutal. I mean, got West Bloopio, Lake Orion, Harper Woods, and then Utica Eisenhower. Um, that's not going to be easy, even though what helps Clarkson is three of the four are at home. So we'll see how that one goes <laughs> in that one there. Um, Lake Orion um, won over Stony Creek um, by a score of, um, my goodness, I mean, like 49-28. Um, um, Billy Roberson, four touchdowns. Um, Andrew Parker, pick six, and a, um, an onside kick return for a touchdown. I thought John Fogler had a really, I thought, um, I thought Fogler had a nice game for Stony Creek. Um, defense really got shredded in that game. Um, I thought when you look at, I mean, and Jane McCarthy took a beating by the Lake Orion defense in that game. Um, when you look at that game, I, I just think that um, Lake Orion, you know, I mean, like, they, um, you know, I'm a little worried about them defensively a little bit. Offensively, you know, they didn't play their best game. I didn't think Tristan Hill played well. But I'm curious to see where the Dragons go these next two weeks. They got Rochester Adams and Clarkson this week. And, and I mean, they got Rochester and Clarkson next two weeks. So we'll see what happens with the Dragons. Um, and then Adam, West Bloom bit 36, Adams 32. Um, with Adams, I'm really impressed with... Um, with them, Ryan Waters um, and Drew Hepner. Um, I thought Hepner had a really nice game for um, Adams. Um, I thought Waters had a nice game for Adams as well. I think Adams is growing as a program. They're getting better. And that's not a good sign for the rest of the league if Adams keeps improving. Um, that kind of tells you something right there when you look at Tony Petrito's program there. Um, and then West Bloomfield... They had a nice they had a nice bounce back after their loss to Lake Orion. Um Raekwon Nance had three touchdowns. Um Elijah Durham had a touchdown catch. Um Cameron Flowers was was very good as well in that game. Brandon Davis Swain had a touchdown catch as well for um WB on a on their homecoming. So good bounce back went for West Bloomfield. Um gonna be curious to see what they do coming up. I mean, especially when you have to play Clarkston, he's got to play. Um, you have Oxford, then you have to play South Anderson Tech. Um, just brutal stretch coming up for West Bluefield. So I know the boys over at um, CCTV and Tyler Kep, you know, they're going to be talking a lot about that game with Clarkson coming up, um, <laughs> which I think is going to be a really, that'll be a Donny Brook between those two teams over at Clarkson. Um, let's look at the matchups this week. Um, let's go to the goal first. Um, when you look at Berkeley and Ferndale, it's Berkeley's homecoming. Berkeley's 0 and 4 at home, um, which is just completely mind boggling that they are 0 and 4 and struggling. Um, and then you look at Ferndale. Ferndale's coming off a big win against Royal Oak. Um, maybe some confidence for Coach Eric Royal and especially his um, offensive and defensive stabs. Um, in this game here, I'm going to take Ferndale in this one. I just think that Colin Hawk, I think he's finally starting to figure things out a little bit. I just think that the Eagles, you know, you know, with their experience, um, I think it could make some noise in this game. Now, Berkeley, I think, will play inspired. I mean, they played much better last week against Pontiac. Um, so it'll be really interesting there. I mean, I think at the end of the day here, I think that Ferndale, with their experience, they're gonna get the job done, and I think they're gonna get by um they're gonna get by Berkeley at Hurley. Um, you know, who would ever thought Berkeley started off 0-6 if they lose that game to Ferndale? So that's something to really, really watch for going forward there. Um in that one. Um we got Avondale Royal Oak. Of course, we had Coach Meyer here on the podcast. Um in this game here, I don't see how Royal Oak stands a chance against Avondale. I really think Tyler Herzog is going to go off. Miles Moore is going to, I think Miles Moore is going to have at least four touchdowns in this game. Um, I really love what Meyer's done with that program. Um, 
their defense is their defense is legit. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't want to see Avondale. I really wouldn't. And if you're in Division Three, I would not want to see Avondale. Give me Avondale in this one over Royal Oak. I would say by five touchdowns. I'm calling it right now. Apologies to Royal Oak. Um, but I'm telling you, Avondale's in another world right now. Um, and then you have the non-league game between um, Troy Athens and Pontiac. Um, I can't tell you how much pressure's on at Troy Athens. Um, yeah, Vernon Burden's the principal there. Troy Athens really struggling. Pontiac, obviously, has got a lot of confidence right now. Coach Wendell Jefferson's got them believing with three wins right now. Um, and I think they can get, I think they can win, win number four. I really do in this week. I really like Pontiac in this game against Troy Athens, especially with the issues Troy Athens has. Um, I, I really think that the, um, I, I like where the Phoenix are at right now. I mean, Kanye, if Kanye Donaldson's back, that's a tough match for Troy Athens. Um, and it's at Pontiac. So I'm going to take the Phoenix over the Red Hawks to win this game. And I think that's going to be the case here. I really do. Now, people are going to say, well, Troy Athens got a great chance to win this game. Yes, they do. But I just think the way Pontiac explained right now, I've got to give an edge to the, um, to the, um, you know, the Phoenix in this game. It'll be an interesting game, to say the least, between those two teams there. Um, Seaholm and Troy. Um, when you look at Seaholm and Troy, um, people thought this would be the game of the year in the Blue Division. I didn't buy Troy before the start of the year. And they've lost two straight. I mean, they've been competitive. I mean, they scored 28 points the last two weeks. 27, actually. But I really think in this game here, Last year's game was 52 nothing. I think it's going to be much worse than that. So I'm going to take Seaholm over Troy convincingly in this one. I really think Troy, they're going to be in for a long night in that game against them, um, against Seaholm. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure if it's Seaholm's homecoming or not. So that's something to really, really watch for in that game right there. Um, and then let's go to the... Um, and then we got Oak Park and North Farmington. Of course, we had Coach John Herstein earlier here on the podcast. Um, in this game here, um, I'm going to like, I really like in this game, I like North Farmington. I, I really like where they've been. I think they've really improved as a program. I think they've done really, really well. Um, and I really think that Avondale, I really think that North Farmington is finally starting to turn the corner. Um, Oak Park, That'll be a good test. That'll be a heck of a game. I think it'll be a close game. I know the good folks at Farm to TV 10 is going to have that game. Um, but I think it's going to be interesting to see how that one goes. But I really like where North Farm is at. Oak Park, obviously, with, with Adrio Guyton. Um, that was the guy that um, Coach Meyer and Coach Herstein talked about with Oak Park. Um, he's the quarterback for them, who's been playing really good football for them lately. Um, so... I really like in that game, um, I'm going to take North Farmington, homecoming, you know, all that. Um, I, I just think the Raiders are going to win that game um, pretty convincingly. No, not convincingly. I think it's going to be close. It'll be really tight in that game. That'll be for sure there. Um, and then to the white, we got, um, we got Farmington at Rochester. And these are two teams that are really struggling. If Cam Petaway plays... Farmington gets an edge in this game. If he's out in this game, then Rochester might have a shot because Farmington has not played well the last two weeks. Now, albeit it was against Southfield Arts and Tech that Farmington played last week, but I think when you look at that game, I think honestly you got to give an edge to you got to give an edge to um. You know, to Farmington here. I think Farmington has played a tougher schedule than Rochester. Now, albeit Rochester's played Adams. Um, they've already played Harper Woods already. Already played Groves already. Still got to play Southfield, which is brutal. Um, Farmington, obviously, they got to play Harper Woods. And they got to play Lake Orion and Utica. Um, I really like Farmington in this game. Convinced, I think Farmington wins this game. But it depends if Camp Petaway plays. If he plays, it'll be a blowout. If not, Farmington close. Um, and then you have 
Bloomby Hills and South and Arson Tech. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Booby Hills going to Southfield. I think it's Southfield's homecoming. It wasn't surprising if this, if this score is lopsided by the end of the first quarter. And it wouldn't surprise me if Southfield gets the rest of their starters for the second half we have running clock. So give me Southfield by, I would say, 56. Um, and then I think the big one in the division is Groves at Harper Woods. Um, this is a fun one. I think this is a great matchup. D1 kids going against, against each other. You have the matchup I'm curious to see is Jacob Odin going against Avery Gack. Um, you look at that matchup here is can Groves handle the travel and can they, you know, obviously with the experience they have, you know, going into Harper Woods, that's not an easy place to play. I mean, Harper Woods is not an easy place to play, especially going down I-94 into 8 Mile. I mean, it is, go it is difficult to say the least playing on that great turf over there at Harper Woods. Um, but I like what coach, um, Jacob Oden's done. I'm um, Coach Rob Oden's done over there. Um, they bounced back after their two tough losses. Um, Groves, I just don't know where they're at right now, even though they won 42 7 against Rochester last week. Um, I really like in this game, I like Harper Woods for a couple of reasons. I just think that I really like the play of their quarterback, Nate Champion. Um, I think when you look at Harper Woods, um, I think honestly, it's going to come down to is Ken Rochester. Um, it's no, it's Ken Harper Woods. You know what I mean? Can they do the same thing that they've done to teams on a consistent basis? You know, and I think for me, this is Harper Woods' toughest game since Lake Orion. Um, even though Southfield game was tough, obviously, but Harper Woods was in that game with them. I mean, the Lake Orion game was just blown out in that game. Um, but I'm going to take Harper Woods in this one against Groves. Um, Obviously, with Groves having to travel, um, yes, both teams got experience, but I just think Harper Woods is going to win that game tight, close. We'll see what happens going forward with them. And then let's go to the red. Um, <laughs> when you look at the red, um, you got Oxford and Stony Creek. This is going to be an interesting game over at Stony. Um, I think when you look at Stony Creek, this is going to be a team, a matchup where I think that um, – you know, I think it's an even Steven matchup. Both teams like to run the ball. High possession football. Um, question is, which style is going to win out here? Um, I thought it over a couple times, but I just decided, you know what, I'm going to go Stony Creek in this game. Uh, being at home, um, I I think Jane McCarthy's going to have a big game, bounce back game for them. I think Cam Fogel, I think John Fogel, I think um, I think Fogler's going to have a bounce back game. Um, I like Stony Creek in that match against Oxford. Um, I think it'll be tight, so we'll see how that one goes. And then the two games we really got to talk about here, um, West Bloomfield at Clarkston, um, and Lake Orion at Adams. Um, Lake Orion at Adams is first. I mean, like, when you look at this matchup here, Lake Orion's motivated. Um, two tough losses to Adams last year. Adams has really improved, um, ever since in the last few weeks. They had a tough loss to West Bloomfield last week. Um, Lake Orion's been rolling on all cylinders um, in this game here. Um, I think this is going to be a tight game. It's going to be a really, really close game. Um, but I like Lake Orion in this one. I, I think the Dragons, um, I think Billy Roberson goes off in this one. I think T.R. Hill goes off in this one. He, he had a rough game last week against um, Stony Creek. I think he has a big game here. Um, I think Raymond Payne, I think he shows up in this one. Jamari Cooper's been playing well. Um, but I really like the Dragons in this one. I think offensively, this could be an offensive shootout. Um, and I expect it to be in front of the Gold Rush. So we'll see what happens in that matchup there. And then our last game here is West Bloomfield at Quarkston. Um, West Bloomfield coming off that tough loss to Lake Orion two weeks ago. Bounce back, knocked off Adams. Um, Quarkston on the other side of things. When you look at the Wolves, I mean, like, you know, coming off, they're really improving, getting a lot of confidence. Um, in this game here, West Bloomfield hasn't won at Clarkson in a while. Um, so this is going to be interesting here. Um, I really like West Bloomfield in this game because of the experience, especially in the secondary. Um, I, I just, I just think that the Lakers are going to really, you know, 
They're going to find a way to stop Stevens. They're going to find a way to um, shut the Bowman twins down, um, shut down Brady Collins. Um, but I just think that at the end of the day here, I, I just think that Clarkston, um, you know, I think Clarkston's going to fight, and I think they're going to have a heck of a game. I think it'll be tight. But I, I just think that the Lakers, you know, what the experience they have, Brandon Davis, Swain there, you have Rick Nance there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that one goes, but I'm going to take West Blue in that one pretty tight. Pretty close. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at saginaw4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. I'd like to thank coaches John Herstein and um, Bob Meyer today for being on the for calling in on the podcast. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, um, make sure you follow the um, boys' soccer rankings, the top 21 set by um, History Now host and um, between Termina's co host, Anthony Termina. They're up on the blog at saginaw4650 at blogspot.com. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. And I'll see you next week. God bless.